All right, one more basic topic for energy analysis, and we'll do that full proof that I keep promising you. We've got momentum. We proved that from Newton's second law. We could show the impulse, net impulses. Impulse causes a change in momentum. We just showed that that momentum is a vector, so you've got to do the x component, net impulse in the x direction, causes a change in momentum in the x direction. Net impulse in the y direction causes a change in momentum in the y direction. We use Newton's third law to talk about objects that are free to move. If, if all these things exploded, I'm not going to throw them, then the total momentum before would equal the total momentum after. But again, you have to do the x part separate and the y part separate. It follows from Newton's third law in kinematics, right? So we have this process of conservation or change where we look just before and just after, for collisions, momentum is a great tool. It's a vector, though. You have to break them up into x and y components unless they're moving straight along a line. Okay? But there's a plus and minus, and the plus and minus for vectors is associated with direction, not amount. Okay? Energy, however, is a scalar. There's no components, and we're going to derive that next from kinematics and force analysis, but we've explored it quite a bit. Turns out that when you get collisions and explosions are interesting too, of a couple of objects, so as an introduction, we'll just work with two objects, A and B, that we need both to fully analyze them. So you might say momentum is MV, but it's MV vector, a momentum vector with X and Y components. Kinetic energy, one half MV squared. What's the difference? Mass and V but one is speed, the other is velocity with direction. So there is, it turns out, a, a difference. You need them both to fully talk about things. So if you want to turn your kinematics and force analysis into something else, you've got to have both of these guys. Uh, sometimes you just get away with energy, and out of those four, if you can do energy, do energy. If you can get away with it, it's definitely the nicest one. But let's take a look at collisions and explosions. So I've got here sketched out some types. We talked about this with momentum. So there are four types of collisions or explosions that we want to talk about. It tends to be pretty confusing. Don't get too confused. Three of these types are when they bounce. These two objects are going to put on this track and make them bounce. One type, it sticks. They come together and they stick. Okay? So there's, here's the types. There's truly elastic, which we just call usually elastic. Some people call it perfectly elastic. Whatever. Elastic. Then there's approximately elastic. It's not really elastic, but you can get away with it. The analysis will be close enough and get you, get you close enough. And then there's what's called inelastic. And then there's perfectly inelastic, where they stick. Okay, so let's explore what those mean. How do we set up the equations? And then the algebra is fine. You take the givens and put it in and solve it. But you just got to draw your picture and know what tools you have to use. So we've got momentum in the x and the y direction, set up your coordinate system, define your plus direction, draw it or get lost. Just take one step at a time. And then we've got energy. Now the nice thing here is we're dealing with just kinetic energy, 1 half mv squared. Why is that? Because if you recall, we talked about collisions and explosions. We generally look just before and just after. And in that time, we often don't have much, much change in height and we don't have much time for, for friction to affect it. Now, it can. So if you are doing some application where you need to deal with that, then you need to deal with it. So you have to make that call. For our problems, as an, as an introduction, you're already doing a lot. So we're only going to look at the kinetic energy because the potential energy won't change much here during that. All right, so what's true for an elastic collision? An elastic collision, I'll state this and then I'll re come back to it and, and, and say it and show it. When it's an elastic collision, you can write momentum equations in the x direction and you need the y direction if it's one dimensional, fine. But otherwise, you've got to break it up into two directions. And what you see is that there's no change. That is, just after minus just before is zero in the x direction. So I've got object A and object B, the x component of the momentum, that's mvx for A, mvx for B, just after, minus mvx for A plus mvx for B, 
just before. Just before, look, just after, it's zero. It's conserved if they're free, if one's not held into place or something crazy happens like that. And that's true here. So just draw your picture, put in your angles, you know, break, a, break your momentum into components, put in what you know, and solve for it. Okay? In fact, something that you'll find here is that in collisions of this sort where the objects are free to move, they're still interacting and the force on A from B is equal in strength but opposite in direction the force on B from A. And that's the, that's the root of conservational momentum. So no matter how they interact, that is going to be true in all of these. Okay. When they stick together, you're happy because they stick together. That means after, just after, they move as one combined mass moving at some velocity, which has an x and a y component, just after and just after. Okay? So you don't have two separate, you don't have things flying off in two separate directions and angles and things like that. So it's nice. But what's it got to do with energy? Because these terms clearly have nothing to do with conservation momentum. Conservation momentum holds. These terms are energy terms. And so, in particular, we're looking at the change in the kinetic energy total of object A and object B. And, of course, the change is just before, which is subtracted from just after, just after, minus just before. And for an elastic collision, that's zero. That's what it means. No loss of energy in the collision, right? And no gain of energy through an explosion or release of a hidden spring or something. When it's approximately elastic, we can get away with it. So oftentimes, like, oftentimes they'll have pool balls, billiard balls, hitting, and they'll say it's an elastic collision. It isn't. I'll show you that. Okay, so this is, they can't touch. To be truly elastic, they can't touch. If they do touch and it's called an elastic collision, it's really approximate. And which means, ah, your results would be good enough. I'm going to show you that in just a second. Any elastic means forget about it. There's, in that collision, the change in kinetic energy of A and B, which is just this, right? That's the change in kinetic energy of A. That's just before, and A and B, just before and left up. There is some. And if you know the kinetic energies, maybe from momentum, you get the kinetic energies, you can figure out how much energy perhaps you lost if something got deformed or broken, crumpled. That took energy, molecular bonds, right? And the jiggling, the jiggling thermal, the jiggling sound, right? Maybe chemical, right? Maybe there's an explosion, so maybe you ain't gained energy, you end up with more than you. Nonetheless, that's called inelastic, but still, it's a bounce, okay? Perfectly inelastic means they stick. Now, this is still true for perfectly inelastic. That is, the energy change is not zero. Right, there's some deformation jiggling. The interesting thing is, and you can check this with very easy algebra, once you set it up, it's a setting it up that you have to get used to. You find that you get the maximum loss of energy when they stick. So that's a curious thing. And there's some other curious things too, like why, when they hit, why is momentum conserved, but kinetic energy isn't? Why is that? I mean, if there's jiggling, there's still no loss of momentum. Why is that? So let's explore that here in a second. So uh, let's, let's do it here now. All right, so, so what have carts on a track got to do with Newton's cradle? Well, you're going to see that in just a moment. So let's, let's check this out. All right. Now, now remember, you can write these equations. So what you want to do is draw a picture. I'm going to have two objects. Now, these are magnetic. And I'm not going to let them touch. Now, there's a little subtle factor that I'm not going to talk about in terms of getting electrons moving. But um, I've got, I'm going to draw my just before and my just after. And then I'm going to do my during, which is over a short period of time, right? So this is going to be elastic. Right? And I can do it various ways. So let's say I can make A come in and hit B with that sitting there. Now let's have MA equal to MB. Same mass. What happens? 
Let's take a look. So I, mean, I want to know what happens afterwards. How do I analyze this? Well, let's see. I know what I can do. One thing I can do, this is one dimensional. So I, I get away with ignoring x and y components of momentum. I just deal with x. So I've got for momentum, px, and then momentum py, don't need. And then I've got kinetic energy. Right? So just before, all right, I've got uh, m. If they're the same, just call them m. Don't subscript them if they're different, if there's no more masses. m times v. And you can call it v1 or v just before, whatever, v1, fine. That's the only momentum I have. I don't need the y here, but I will if it goes off in other directions. And for kinetic energy, I got 1 half m times the speed squared. Now it's an elastic collision, so then I can say that's equal to the momentum afterwards. Now they're not sticking, right? So I've got m going off at v a2 plus m going off at v b2. So I don't know what's going to happen. It's also a last, now this is always. But this is elastic. So that lets me equate it to 1 half mva2 squared plus 1 half mvb2 squared. This one's kind of fun. So let's see what happens. You might guess what happens. Well, think in terms of momentum and then energy, right? Now, we can kind of predict this. Let's use our math to predict it. Okay, so math to predict it. Uh, the m's are the same in this case, not in other cases, just don't oversimplify it. So I can get rid of the m's, right? Uh, what have I got? That leads me to v1 is va2 plus vb2. Now, one of those might be negative. That's true. And then I get rid of the halves and the m's here. Can't do it if, if it's not a common factor, but it is. So that tells me v1 squared equals v a2 squared plus v b2 squared. Okay. Now this is going to get a little messy. So if you don't mind, I'm going to be a little sloppy. I'm just going to get rid of the twos. I know that the one is just the one. In this particular case, just this case, right? Let me see, what is that? Huh. All right, so V1 is this. So this is my theory. So theory sometimes guides the experiment, and vice versa, and so on. So that means that VA plus VB squared equals VA squared plus VB squared. Mathematically, that is not an identity by any means. In fact, there's a condition there, right? So how do I do that? That's VA squared plus VB squared plus 2VA VB equals VA squared plus VB squared. By subtraction, not factoring, right? Not, not by addition, uh, not by multiplication, subtract, uh, division. <laughs> Subtracting these two go away and subtracting these two go away. And so what I have is 2VAVB equals 0. Well, now I can divide out 2VAVB equals 0. And this tells me three possibilities. Okay, Either VA and VB equals 0. That would solve that. Or VB equals 0. VA not zero, or VA is zero, and VB is not zero. Do you see how that, you know, don't jump, jump to conclusions. And let's see, so mathematically, my point here is that math has multiple solutions, but the physics restricts it, okay? So this means that neither one are going to be moving. But how, how can that be true? Well, if VA and VB are zero, Go back up over here. That means that V1 is 0. So that's happening now. 
It's true. It's an elastic collision. It's a non-collision. Fine. Uh, not moving. No motion. That satisfies all my conditions. Momentum's conserved, energy's conserved, everything's zero, we're all good. The next one, that means B is not moving. This stays still. If B is not moving, then A continues on at the same speed. They missed. No collision. So it's true, but it's not what we're interested in, is it? This one says A stops dead and B continues on. At what speed? If A is zero, BB continues on with the same speed. So in this particular type of collision, let's do it right here, we have this. It's a very special case. Here we go. Magnets. I'm not going to let them touch. One's going to come in. This will be A. This will be B. Let's think in terms of momentum. I've got a certain momentum coming in and a certain momentum going out. A certain momentum coming in and a certain momentum going out. A certain momentum coming in and a certain momentum going out. Kinetic energy, same kinetic energy in as out. It's a transfer. It's a perfect transfer both of momentum, which is always going to be a conservation of momentum, but it's a transfer of kinetic energy, conserved. Okay, so that's nice. Now, you know, what happens if I go like this? What happens if I'm a little kid and I run into an elephant or, or some such? Well, that's interesting. Now check this out with momentum. Remind yourself. If I come in with uh, 10 units of momentum, 10 units, and I bounce back, well, then I've got negative momentum. Say I got, I don't know, negative 2. 10 plus 0 momentum is 10 units of momentum. Negative 2 plus 12 units of momentum is still 10 because momentum is conserved in any of these types of collisions. So somehow I collide and I end up with more momentum. Not total though. The total stayed the same. Why? Because this got a force and it moved, right? This got a force and it stopped and then went back. So be careful. What about kinetic energy? Ah, that's conserved too. Work it out, however it is. What if, you know, just start with a basic statement that's true, and then start filling in the details, and then it'll all fall out. What if the uh, elephant runs into the kid? Right, okay. So, come in with 10 units of momentum. Keep some positive, I don't know, three units, and the kid's got seven, because momentum is conserved. Energy, it'll work itself out too. The energy total before equals the energy total after, because it's an elastic collision. Now. What if I do this? What if I make them collide and make them hit? Make them hit. When they hit, there's some jiggling. And that takes some energy away, right? That takes some energy away. So I would call that approximately, el approximately elastic. They hit, but there's still some jiggling, some sound. Some energy went there. Let's check this out over here. Consider this case, hitting here, and they hit, okay? Now, we think of elastic as springy, so, you know, these are springy, so people say, oh, this is an elastic collision. Well, let's see. Same mass, I should get the same result. That kept going a little bit. That wasn't the exact same result. It's a little lost there. So maybe you can model it as elastic, but in reality, that sound, that rubbing, that jiggling energy, that took some energy away. Fine, do the calculation as though it's elastic. Momentum conserved, of course. Kinetic energy, same before as after. Fine, but it does get moving a little bit. So if it's approximately elastic, you'll see that happen. It won't stop dead, okay? Um, good, so, so it's not truly, if they touch, it's not truly elastic. All right, so there's a, there's a case there. Um, and we can do various things here. What about this? Here they're going to hit. 
And that really keeps moving. So I'd be hard pressed to model that as elastic. I mean, that is inelastic. That's an inelastic collision. And you can load up the mass, however, and, and see how that goes. But that's an inelastic collision. And in that case, I can still use conservation momentum in all these cases, but I could find, I would have to be given enough information or measure it to find the change in energy. And that would tell me how much energy went to if there's any deformation or jiggling thermal sound. But it's hard to keep track of how much went to each, right? So that's tricky. Now, if they stick, I can do that with Velcro. Now, if they stick, that's a beautiful thing. So come in, carrying momentum, thinking momentum, mv, this is way directional. K kinetic energy, 1 half mv squared, no direction. They stick. I still have momentum this way. If they stick, I gotta have momentum that way. Right? And uh, they, they stick, they, they carry the same total kinetic energy. Is, is kinetic energy the same? No. If it's inelastic, the kinetic energy has got to change. So you can calculate that. Watch how quickly we can do that. All you have to do is look at it here. Look at your case, right? This is always gonna be true. But now we can say, hey, wait a minute. Uh, let me go over here and take a look. How are we doing? Okay, we got uh, mass. In this case, they're the same mass plus mass v2. Right. So that means that uh, the this is 2m v2 is equal to m v1, and that means that v2 is it's going to go off with half the speed in order to have conservation momentum. Fine. What about kinetic energy? No. No, you cannot equate those. So these are not equal. What can I do with it? Well, I can check. I can do a quick check here. I can say, huh, how much kinetic energy do I have at the beginning? Well, I got 1 half m uh, v1 squared. How much do I have at the end? I got 1 half m plus m v2 squared. Now that is 1 half 2m, and this guy, v2, is v1 over 2 squared. Watch it. So I'm just, I'm, I'm not memorizing this, right? Let's see, the half, I got 1 half. This is v1 squared over 4, 2m. That's 1 half mv1 squared. I got a half done there. Right? That's one half of the kinetic energy that I started with. So I end up with half of what I started with. I lost half of that energy in the collision because they stuck. And that's going to be maximal. So how can I do that as an equation? Delta E, or in this case, delta K, whatever, delta E is k2 minus k1, or k just after, minus k just before. And you're going to see that k just after was half k1 minus k1, and so you've lost that. Do the, write it on paper. Don't do it in your head. That's weak. You think it's strong. It's weak. It's weak, okay? So that happens. So check this out. If this comes in here, uh, and we're going to collide like that, and I come in now. Let's come in at the same speed, right? So let's do elastic real quick. How are you doing? Okay. Uh, I think we'll pick this one up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to you calculate it. We're going to do it in the next one. Come in at the same speed, same mass, elastic versus same speed, opposite direction. So that counts momentum, you gotta do direction. Same speed, same mass, coming in and sticking perfectly inelastic. What will the results be? And how does that tell us something about Newton's cradle? That's the next video.